the first thing that we can note today, it's not the fact that um, it's an anti-poverty strategy you should care. So my first part of call is where the stats on poverty in care. Um, so I was having problems trying to find stats on poverty in care. Um, so we asked uh, by parliamentary kind of questions uh, via all the TDs and they're all very good responsive. And we got back answers. So the first one, you know, we asked for levels of consistent poverty, child poverty, food, uh, food uh, poverty and field poverty, uh, and the deprivation rates and the median household income in County Clare. The answer we got back was the, the official public kind of the, the official uh, poverty data, as as collated by the CSO, is not available at an um, electoral or county level. Short answer: They don't have stats for for these. In, in they do, care. but they don't. Um, it's just like hold on there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for this. So data on child poverty is not published by the CSO even on a regional level. So again, we, they, we, we have issues here, and that data trends on uh, deprivation kind of indicators. And what this means is that when the CSO tries to work out who is, you know, who is suffering from, kind of, you know, or who was in deprivation or not, they have a list of items which they say show this. And if you have two or more of them, then for stats purposes, you're in. So we asked for a breakdown of how many are, are in these in terms of care. And I don't have them. Uh, but not even at a, at a regional level. However, tackling fuel poverty is a government priority. They just don't collect stats on it. So um, when we looked at how many people work in Clare, this was an interesting one as well, they said that the exact information is not available and that the quarterly stats or, or the quarterly kind of um, employment kind of estimates from the Labour Force Survey are done at a regional level, and um, NUTS3 at uh, regional uh, level. And due to the methodology and sample size of the survey, it is not possible to produce reliable county estimates from the Labour Force Survey. So the basic, the, yeah, the basic change was that we asked them how many people are working in Clare, and the answer back was we don't know. It's clear that we're content. So just, yeah, 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 just, like, you know, just hang on there. So what we're getting back here is that, now they're being a bit civil servicey, um, because they use Dick and Labour Force Survey. I didn't ask for the Labour Force Survey. I asked for the stats. They would have these stats in terms of the PSI, um, you know, the, the income tax kind of returns. They would have stats on who's paying income tax, PSI, who's on kind of payrolls, income declare. You don't seem to be of a mind to kind of pass on that kind of information this way. So they then said that we won't give you information for Claire, but it's some wonderful information here for Claire uh, Limerick and for Antwerp and Tipperary. This set off an alarm bells for me, uh, just, uh, you know, just as a research, because stats are never neutral. How you frame stats sets the sets what can be debated, what can be talked about, what can't be kind of talked about. When I read this, what I read was, and maybe I'm I may be being a, um, a bit unfair, but what I read was we don't want you to have stats on Clare. We want you to use stats for the region instead. And they're the only stats that we're giving you. So the so as kind of David <coughs> pointed out, the region is Clare tip and like Limerick, and this is the region which they're talking about. I was able to get some stats on the region broken down by county. And where I got it from was the county incomes and regional kind of GDP kind of report for 2018. What this is, is it's, it's an estimate of what is the GDP of each county. Um, and they work out what's the, what's the kind of disposable income per person in each kind of county from that. However, stats mean stats. This is per person. So they take the, the <coughs> population of Clare, which is 112,000 people at the last kind of census, and they divide that into the GDP, and they get this answer, 21,000 and a 25, meaning that every child that you see is getting 21,000 
and every kind of pensioner is getting kind of 21,000. These are still useful because they use the same methodology for Clare, Limerick, and Tip. We can then compare the counties. So the numbers don't matter, but because it's a consistent kind of methodology, we can compare county by county. So when we look at, at let me try. This, this is the closest I, I, I could get at this stage to delving into what is, what is the composition of, of the counties in that region, what's happening in them. And what I started to see was that a, a disposable income as measured under that kind of GDP kind of measure. This is for Clare and this is for Limerick. That um, up to around 2008, incomes, oh sorry, the not, in, not incomes, but the money that's been generated in Clare was moving up to almost to a parity with Limerick on 7th 2008. And the crash happened. And, Le and Clare has not recovered from the crash. I can't see stats from that. Limerick, in terms of the money that's going into Limerick, I'm not saying that you know, kind of poverty, but in terms of the money that's going into Limerick, that has that has seems to have kind of clawed back from it. When we look at the uh, disposable income per person as a percentage of the disposable income per person in Limerick, and again, it's only for kind of a, a, compar a, a comparison of reasons. Again, we see that up to, up to kind of 2008, they're almost kind of equal, and then the crash happens, and Clare is just kind of bobbing along here. Um, when we look at the three counties in terms of the amount of money that's been generated in, in kind of each county, Clare is light blue, Tip is dark blue, and Limerick is uh, green. Limerick is getting up to around 47, 48% of that region. Um, Clare is steadily, it's starting, to, it's, been, it, 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 it's been flatlining more or less since around 2013. Limerick is starting to kind of go up. It's getting more of a percentage of the income of that kind of region, and Tipperary is actually on the way down. What this means is that, given the fact that we're looking at this, that's from a regional kind of point of view, the, you can actually have a policy where Limerick benefits, the stats benefit, so you can say that the region is a benefit. So that's what I see here. I see, when we look at um, the deep the deep population of the county, and this is heartbreak, but I mean, this is from 1981 up to 2016. Uh, the, the places in red and orange is where we're seeing a population decline in Clare, and the places in like a yellow, light blue, or sorry, a light green to kind of dark green, it's a population kind of increase. This is Ennis here. Sorry, it's a bit blurry because it's a screen grab. It was just like slides. So, uh, so we, it's a screen grab. This is Ennis, and this is kind of Kill Rush. So Ennis, there's been a population kind of decline in this part of it, and slight kind of growth here. So what I'm saying is that if we're looking normally at this stage as a researcher, you're under pressure, you've got deadlines, you can't get stats, so you use what's available. So you fall back onto the regional ones. And then you say that, you, uh, you put in a, a, a kind of qualifier saying, although we don't have stats for Clare, we do have these stats for this region, and what these stats tell us is X, Y, and Z. Well, I'm not being paid to do a regional kind of survey for kind of anti-poverty. It's for Clare. What I see here worries me because it seems that we have a situation where the very specific problems and structural issues that are being faced by County Clare are not being picked up by this regional approach. And I'll just give two small examples of that. This is, um, again, based on the 2016 census. We're due one next week, of course. So these stats will be kind of, you know, kind of updated. But this is central heating in Clare compared uh, to the state. And people have gotten their forms, they'll know that it's your main use. It's not, it, 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 you can only pick one. 
So with your main use. So, so this is what, in, in, in what do you mainly use in terms of clerk? Straight away, we can see that there is a structural difference in terms of home heating and clare to the rest of the state. Oil is nearly 60% of homes. Their main form of heating and clare to the home heating oil. The national average is, is, is going to 40%. Gas is uh, it's at one third. Coal is up, peat is up, and wood is up. So again, I when I read on these stats, what I see is some people might look at them and say, there's a choice here. People are choosing to use oil over gas, <laughs> which <laughs> is not because they don't have the infrastructure isn't there. You don't have the alternatives. Um, you cannot price people out of changing their behavior here. They'll just stop using stuff and they'll suffer as a consequence. The, the behavior will change through making them more poor or by impoverishing their economic circumstances. So straight away, you, can't, you have to have a particular climate action strategy for Claire that takes into account the structural differences that pertain to kind of Claire here. When we look in terms of the transport, oh yeah, this is just one from like, this of no shock at anyone, but the home heating has doubled in the last kind of six weeks. And this will disproportionately hit Claire down the other counties. Structurally, that is a structural imbalance. Um, in terms of the commuting, 68% of daily kind of travel in Clare is by car. Um, what I read there, but when I see this in terms of train, dart, or like Lewis, there is 71 people in the whole of Clare who go to uh, college or school by train, dart, or like Lewis, and there's 91 people who go to work by train, dart, or Lewis. If you didn't know Clare, you'd go, well, they're also choosing to drive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but there's no trains. There's, that's the that's the reason why there's no real kind of public transport. The bus use is 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 um, four thousand eight hundred on foot is seven thousand eight hundred, but it's absolutely massive, sixty eight percent. That's a structural issue. You're not going to change that through personal kind of uh, behaviour kind of changes because there's nothing to change to. So again, we have a particular structural imbalance the county clear that needs to be tackled at a policy level at either um, a county regional or for public transport really kind of state transport kind of level again this gets into kind of climate action because the strategy at the moment and, and i'm simplifying just for the just the purposes of this kind of presentation but it is to try and price people out of one behavior and price them into something else but for that to work there needs to be something else that you can price them into. And I don't see evidence of that here. Um, and it loves roundabouts, I, I can't it. <laughs> um, it loves those roundabouts, my God, it loves them. It's very, very fond of them. Um, so, and then finally, just on housing. So again, these are the stats from 2016, but this is, this is the percentage of social housing at the moment in Clare. And this is, these, these figures always always worry me because this is not a map of need. This is a map of use. This is where social housing has been used. It's not a map of where social housing is needed. It's just a map of where it's been used at this moment. For historical reasons maybe, but that's where it is at the moment. But you can see that even there, you know, there are certain like it's there are certain kind of areas where its usage it's been used now, not where the need is. This map does not tell us whether it's needed here, here, or here. It's just telling us that it's not there. Um, this is the, the percentage of those who are renting. Um, and the darker the, 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 the color, then the stronger. I show these because when we look at the stats for poverty rates in Ireland, um, right, Clare has um, a, a higher percentage of outright home ownership than the rest of the state. Again, for historical reasons, and, you know, this is your land stuff here. 
But like, um, but like, if a private rented is it is around fifteen percent, and rental kind of authority is six point two percent. Again, this is not telling us that's usage, not need. That's just telling us what's been used, not what has been needed. I highlight that because. The CSO did something different in its um, income, uh, sorry, in its, um, in its most recent uh, income and living kind of conditions uh, survey. <coughs> it's just kind of every year, every two years maybe, or every year. Um, for the first time, it, it, it asked, who's at risk of poverty after they pay rent and, and mortgage? And what they found was that Nationally, it's around 19% of the state of people are in, are in risk of, of poverty once rental is like taken into account. In the sudden, for these kind of stats, suddenly includes the Midwest. It's around 19.6%. So even from the CSO kind of figures, at least one in five of people in the southern kind of region are at risk of their poverty. Um, when we get into those who are actually renting, nationally, half of those who rent from local kind of authorities are at risk of their poverty. Over half of those in other forms of social housing are at risk of poverty. And, 30 and 31% nationally of all renters are at risk of poverty from the deacon and private sector. And that's they all, that's the first time that you brought in an actual outgoing from your so-called disposable income. They haven't factored in bills, electricity, all the other things. Um, according to the CSO, you're at risk of poverty if after tax you get 272 euros a week. If you get more than that, then you're not at risk of poverty. That's how they collect their their stats. If you're getting 273 euros from a st from a st statistical point of view, you're not at risk of, of, of poverty. Um, however, there's a campaign called the Living Wage Campaign that actually does a kind of cost of living kind of analysis. So it looks at it actually works from the ground up. It says what do people need as an income in order to get through the week. And they say that their own kind of um, you know, figures is that in rural areas, it goes from, from 384 euros a week up to 411 euros. And then for Dublin, it's 520. That's the shortfall in the, in the, in, in, in the figures. This is not you having, this is just to get through the week. They're saying that this is what, on average, people need. So the government's figures are saying that no, it's 272. And uh, so there's a problem even in, 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 in like how, how, um, how poverty is being kind of measured. I reckon I can work out the poverty level for Claire once I get those stats from a revenue in terms of the income. Um, but that's where they at home. Okay, I've talked a bit more than I planned. But that was, that's basically, there's a lot more in, in that I've covered, but I just thought for this kind of session, I think that because the regionalization is such a huge part of the county development plan, I just think that it's working on highlighting there are, there, I think, there are issues there. <laughs>